happy watch, and she's all the way from Carrie <laughs> on <Aunt> Shoe. <laughs> out tonight. We're so pleased to see so many people coming here. We're really doing our level best to get this place up and running and as you know we're sort of doing voluntary work for the last year and it's really proved to, to be successful with the help of our CE scheme over there. They're fantastic, our staff, they're absolutely fantastic. So without further ado as they always say, it's over to you Michael. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right. Well it's always a pleasure to meet me in Clonmel since I live just a little bit down the river. And uh, it's a particular pleasure this evening to see so many friendly character faces here, and even some friendly faces from the Dead Man's Maureen, <laughs> which the Carrick people would know all about. Well, not quite, because we don't know the mystery of why it is called the Dead Man's Maureen. But I love that place, name because it has a sense of mystery about it. <clears throat> I was just thinking, looking at this lovely, this ravishing work, that uh, I was reading somewhere recently that, that the artist Francis Bacon, the painter Francis Bacon, said that the job of the artist is always to deepen the mystery. Always to deepen the mystery. And what mystery? Well, the mystery is all around you. It's all around us in our lives, really. And uh, Kathy, in her artist statement, which I may read you a bit of as I go along, in my short speech, uh, she mentions light and she mentions water and the interaction of the two, and of ripples, for example, of what what that what happens visually, and um, when when this works on water. And when you mention light and water, you're mentioning the the, the basic essentials of life, of all creation. Um, I'm interested in photography and. Photography is a large part of Kathy's art as well. For example, the pictures that are around us here, the pictures which are framed are actual photographs, unmanipulated photographs. And some of them look like abstract pictures, and indeed they are in a sense, in the sense that you can't look at them immediately and recognize an object. Uh, because if you look closely at simple things like a puddle that she has done, a puddle outside the door that you happen to look down, you don't have to look into the universe, you can look, find the universe at your feet sometimes, a puddle of water and a little reflection of the way light works on it for an instant. And the, the real mystery of photography is its interaction with time. As somebody said, a photograph, especially a people, a photograph is time holding its breath. And a hundred years later, it is still there. Um, so, Kathy takes photographs, such as the ones you see here, which are unmanipulated, as I say, they're actual photographs of real things. And they're, they're amazingly rich and mysterious when you, when you take time to look at them. The other works here are paintings, in all their detail. And sometimes the paintings derive from photographs she has taken in order to hold an instant. If I say anything that is not the case, Kathy's <laughs> <laughs> uh, in order to in order to catch that instant, so that she has something before while it is still there. So we really are entered upon the mystery of time. I'm very interested in photography myself, and uh, as an amateur, without too much <coughs> uh, technical skill, I have a lot of aesthetic ambition, but but not much technical skill. And last year, I think it was sometime, I was on a railway bridge down there where I live, after dark, trying to photograph uh, the planets, the two planets, Venus and Jupiter, and the moon, our moon, which on that evening happened to have a particular kind of a conjunction. Not that they were close to one another, but that they were on more or less in the same plane on that time and date. And I had set up my camera trying to photograph this, unsuccessfully really, but nevertheless, the whole exercise of standing there at that moment, in that place, really made me think about the mystery of all of this. Because as a, as a friend of mine who is a scientist and a, and a better astronomer than I am, pointed out to me that when I was trying to photograph that instant of those three heavenly bodies, I was actually photographing different dimensions of time because 
I have to look at what he told me here. The light from the moon takes something like a fiftieth of a second to reach my eye or your eye. The light from Jupiter that I was looking at was actually as it was on Jupiter 35 minutes ago. The light from Venus was two and a half minutes ago. So here in the one frame, you have these three dimensions of time. So I'm just trying to illustrate how much we are absolutely surrounded by this mystery. And that, that is the outward mystery. Because when you see your work by an artist, you're, always, you're also seeing the inward vision, which is unique to the artist. Absolutely unique. And that is really what brings you, I suppose is the basic importance of a visual image, a, a visual art that you are getting a representation perhaps of something, but you are also getting a representation of the inward immensity, what somebody called the intimate immensity of the inward life of the artist, uh, which we all have to some extent, I suppose. Um, I really find, even, you know, at the basic level of strolling around here, I came in a little bit early, I got a good chance to look at the, the pictures, the images. Uh, even at that basic level, they are extremely attractive, enchan enchanting images. They have a certain, they have a, a real vibrancy too. I think, which is lent to them by, by the rhythm of the fact that you see these reflections and these uh, concentric ellipses uh, in in a lot of the pictures, which are actually ripples. Um, that's a, a theme which runs through the whole lot almost. But as I say. The larger pictures, the unframed pictures, are all paintings. Everything is painted, perhaps based on an earlier photograph. And that's kind of a unique interaction. There have been arguments for, or there used to be arguments, in the early history of photography about the relationship between photography and painting. And uh, I, I don't think those arguments go on any longer, um, because they interact now. And our lives and the way we see things, writers, the way that writers write now, for example, unconsciously is deeply influenced by cinematography and by the camera. You can read pieces of prose or poetry now, and you can see it almost cinematically. That the, that the, and I've often discussed this with poets or other writers, some of whom are not aware at all until you point out to them, that's a very cinematic poem. It has camera angles and, you know, so that we have incorporated that, those of us of this, of the world, of the time, this time, and of, well, the most part of a century and a half or more now, of the camera and how it has changed our consciousness. So all of that is kind of incorporated here together. The word photography itself didn't appear till I think around the, nine, around the year 18, the late 1830s. And it's credited to have been, the word is credited to have been coined by uh, a scientist and a chemist, a wonderful Victorian man of many parts called Sir John Herschel. And like most scientists and, and, and learned people of that age, he was schooled in the classics. And, and so the word photography derives from two Greek words. Now, I don't, don't think I know Greek, Greek. I, don't, I wish I did. But uh, phos, phos, photos, refer to light, and graphos means writing. So literally the word photography, and a wonderful concept for this man to have, to grasp this situation. The word photography really means writing with light, which is a beautiful idea, and so true of, of the thing, of this new thing that happened in the world of photography. So uh, I really do find it attractive to recognize the way Kathy has made, has managed to make a wedding, or a marriage rather, between the two media, if you like, of, of painting and of the camera. So I, I'm not sure if there's anything else I need to point out to you, except to advise you, perhaps as I would do at the opening of any exhibition, and it's a relief to be asked to open an exhibition and go along and find that you really like the pictures yourself. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, I mean, you can go to an exhibition and you may not like the pictures very much, or the, or the exhibits very much, 
which is not to say that they're bad art, but the Jews, they simply don't find a response in yourself, you know. It's like looking at a menu, I suppose. That some things you respond to, or it's like listening to music. Uh, but it's a relief to come along and find that I really am uh, enchanted by these pictures. And I will come along uh, some other day to spend some time with them. Because you don't really get much of a chance to see the pictures properly uh, at an opening, especially where you have a large crowd of people, thankfully. Uh, that's to welcome the pictures into the world, into the public world. That's what the, the, the opening is about and the exhibition is about. And uh, I'm happy to see it here or in, in this building because I have an old history of this building myself as an art centre. And also I remember, I'm old enough to remember when I was a small boy when this was a bus, yeah, bus. Yeah, bus, yeah. A, bus yeah. a bus station where we would come up and carry and wait here for the bus back to Carrick and, in hard times. Uh, so, you know, there's a history behind them, almost everything. And uh, this space has its own history. And I wish, I hope it will try and continue to try it. So, finally, let me just say, if you have a few bomb to spend, <laughs> if you really like a picture, remember this, and it is really true, that you're getting something unique. You're getting something once off. Uh, especially, that's especially true of painting because, uh, I mean, the identity of a painting, an original painting, it has a, a tactile authenticity and a uniqueness that the artist, whoever he or she is, has touched it. And there is only one such. That is the, that is the fascinating thing about a painting, especially. I think. So I welcome this lovely display and exhibition. And Kathy, I want to congratulate you sincerely. One last word. I also am aware of Kathy's work as a teacher, as an art teacher. <laughs> and, and I'm sure there are other art teachers here, possibly. And I would like to really say how happy I am that there are art teachers and that there are schools in which art is taught, as it is in Scotland because there are also schools in which art is not taught. And I feel very strongly about that, for the good of our society uh, and the good of our souls. So I congratulate the school in which Kathy works, as well as the artist herself. Good luck, Kathy. I'm not a woman of words, <laughs> I'm going to leave that to, to Michael, but I would like to thank Michael for your eloquent words and you just brought a new dimension to the exhibition and um, I always said if I was going to have one that I wanted Michael and I've said that for years so uh, you weren't the, the last on the line, you were the top of the list and I was absolutely delighted when he said he could do it. So I feel very privileged, very honoured um, to have had you here. I'd like to just thank everybody for coming. <laughs> yeah, well, well done. Thank you. Well done. Yeah. Yeah. One last thing, I'd just like to thank the, the staff here because um, for starting with Maureen, because um, strong woman. Uh, superwoman, I was calling her today. Yeah. Um, without Maureen a green to have my exhibition here, I wouldn't be here today. Um, I've had ups and downs with different things, but what I would say is Garth has been fantastic. Uh, Michael Hone, the exhibition, I think you all agree, super. Yeah. I couldn't have asked for better. Um, Iris was there uh, giving us a, a soft touch uh, for the last two days, and she's been just tremendous, uh, encouraging me all the way. So you've been a pleasure to work with, and um, again, just a big, big thank you. And, um, said and thank you to everybody for turning up and your kind words. Thank you very much.